Hi, my name is Bren Antrim and I'm one of the librarians here at the Santa Monica College Library. Today we're going to do a short tour of library research guides, otherwise known as LibGuides. In order to get to them from the college homepage, you have a number of ways to get to the library homepage. You can mouse over student support and click under library. You can click on student support, scroll down under academics to find the library, or you can type in www.smc.edu slash library and that will also take you directly there. Once you're there we have a number of things on this page that could be useful to your research and there is a video website guide um, on our YouTube channel if you'd like to take a look at that. But today we're going to specifically look at our research guides. Research guides come in three flavors. The first is a general purpose guide. We have the fewest of those, but they apply to the most classes. They include things like citation styles, the Modern Language Association, or MLA, and American Psychological Association, or APA style guides. We have a guide for faculty. We have an introduction to research that I'm going to go over in some depth in just a moment. And we have how to avoid plagiarism. We also have subject guides. And these guides are linked to the areas of interest that Santa Monica College has. So for example, if you happen to be in fashion design and merchandising, and you have a class that you're going to be writing a paper or making a presentation for, you can go to our research guide for fashion design merchandising. We will talk about choosing a topic, how to use the APA style references that are common in that area, how to find articles, books, including eBooks, a current biography database that is specifically useful for um, some classes in fashion design and merchandising, how to use MLA style with sample citations in case you need that, and other resources to assist you with this. There are multiple discipline or class specific guides that you can take a look at. In addition, the third type is a topic guide which differs from subject guides because they're not tied to the areas of interest. They are broader, they're interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary, and they talk about things like um, the COVID virus and um, various heritage months for which we put up displays in the library like the Women's History Month and various projects that are ongoing at the campus such as private Project 562, which is currently ongoing, or specific things of interest to wide groups, um, like fake news and disinformation. When you go into those live guides, those will approach those topics from a variety of different viewpoints. So I'm going to show you two topic guides um, that are useful to anyone. The first is a general purpose guide, and that is the introduction to research guide. If you're given a paper, a presentation, essay in history or sociology or English or anything like that, and you just don't really know where to start, this is a good guide to get you started. It talks about things like how to avoid plagiarism, how to choose a topic, some general information about writing research paper, although of course for specifics you would go to your instructor, how to find articles, how to find books, the two main styles that are used at the community college, video resources, and web resources. In addition, there's a link to our 24-7 library chat. So you can talk with someone if you get stuck. If it's during times that the library is open and we're not teaching, you'll talk to an SMC librarian. Otherwise, you'll talk to a university or college librarian from one of the other colleges in the International Consortium to whom we belong. But you will always speak with a librarian when you go to this Ask a Librarian. Embedded in here also will be a video that guides you through our website. So where do you get started? How do you dig deeper and find what you need? So as an example, if I were trying to choose a topic and I wasn't really sure how to do that, I could dive into the subcategory for that in the Introduction to Research Live Guide and it would give you some tips. It would tell you first, when you're thinking about your topic, how do you start? How do you narrow it down a little, how do you refine it, whether there's too much information or not enough, 
What do you do if you just don't know where to begin? Here's a video on the Opposing Viewpoints database that has a number of current timely topics, pro and con essays, statistics, articles, and other items that would be really helpful to your research. So this is how this Introduction to Research LibGuide can help you directly when you're trying to work on a paper. Another way that you can dive into a LibGuide is from our library homepage. If you're looking to look for an article on your topic, where do you begin? You go into Databases, and that drops you into the Databases LibGuide. And this LibGuide is useful in a number of different ways. It gives you an alphabetical listing of specific databases. So if you know the name of the database, you can go there directly, or you can search for it directly here. If your instructor in your art history class has said you have to use JSTOR, and you look at these 52 databases that we have, and you say, it's called this. Where do I find it? You can search for it. It will take you directly there. In addition, you can search by subject, and this is not by the subject necessarily of the LibGuide, but by the subject that you are trying to write for. So say you happen to be writing a history um, paper. Um, you can go here and we have five databases that are specifically about history, or eight that are specifically on health science, one that is specifically on economics. So this is a way, if you have too much information, to narrow it down. If you don't have enough information, then you want to go broader and perhaps go to a multidisciplinary database like Academic Search that's listed first that has a little bit of everything about a little bit of everything. And that's one of the reasons why these are listed under the most popular databases. Academic Search is our broadest database. U.S. Newsstream is a very broad database, but it's only newspapers. And opposing viewpoints in context is often where people go to find pro-con arguments or to help them choose a topic. The U.S. Newsstream link brings me to the next search, which is by database types. Many of our databases, like Academic Search, they're a little bit of everything. They have newspapers and scholarly journals and popular magazines and blogs and videos. But some databases are only ebooks, or primarily ebooks, or they're only newspapers, or they're only scholarly journals. So if your instructor has said you can only use scholarly journals for this English 2 paper, you can go there and it will tell you the various databases that include scholarly journals. And then you can browse through them, take a look at the description of the database, and if it looks useful for you, go directly to that database. For example, if I'm doing a psychology research paper, I can go to the Psychology and Behavioral Sciences collection. I might also find interesting information in academic search, but I'd have to do a lot more searching for it because it covers everything. Whereas Psychology and Behavioral Sciences doesn't have as many choices, but everything that it has is specifically on my area of interest. So heading back into databases, you can search by subject, you can search by what type of information is within that database. You can search by the direct title of the database if you know what it is. Or you can browse through, take a look at the description of what's in that database, and then go to that database for your actual search. If you have any questions at any time, you can go back to the library homepage you can ask a librarian here, you can ask us here, and Ask a Librarian is often embedded in the databases themselves, so you can ask us a chat question without leaving your search. And while you're in that chat question, if you need additional assistance, you can request a Zoom if that's appropriate for you as well. So if you have any questions, ask us.